Hello and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. I'm Jana and I'm here to tell you about the new Funky Junkie Challenge. We're going to be playing to the theme Dynamite and this challenge is running through September 8th through 21st. So for the project, we are adding die cuts. Die cuts could be your main focus or they could be supporting elements to your project. Either way, have some fun and get creative. I am looking forward to seeing all of your wonderful makes over at the Funky Junkie blog. Today I'm going to be doing a journal spread and I'm going to be using a mixture of collaging and, of course, a variety of dyes. So if you'd like to know about some of the supplies I've used, go ahead and pause. All right, let's head over to the crafty corner. Today, we're going to be working on a journal spread. I'm working out of my Dino Wakely Mixed Media Journal. To start with, I'm going to be laying down a layer of white gesso. This is going to act as a primer and give me a smooth surface to work on. For painting this on, I'm using one of the Tim Holtz Multimedia brushes. I absolutely love these because they're so wide and allow me to cover the page very quickly. Once I have my layer of paint down, then we'll see about creating our background. Since the gesso is so thick, I tend to give it a little bit of a head start using the Ranger heat tool, but for the most part, I'll let it air dry. And air dry time usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes, which isn't too bad. Now I'm going to give the journal page a jump start with the Ranger heat tool. I'll be blasting it for about 30 to 40 seconds, and then I'll let the rest of it air dry. For the background, we're going to be using some chipped sapphire, kitsch flamingo, broken china, shaded lilac, picket fence, and a dash of peacock feathers. For this technique, I'm going to be doing some paint marbling. First, I'm starting by wetting the page with some water from my Distressed Water Mister. Then I'm dripping on a whole bunch of chipped sapphire. This bottle is pretty much empty, so I added a little bit of water to give it more fluidity, and I'm using that as a base. Then I'm going through and sprinkling in the other colors. I'm really enjoying using the Broken China. This is going to help give me a soft pastel look. I'm trying to contrast these two pages. One is gonna be very super soft and pastel, and the other one is hopefully going to capture some tones of darkness and night. For accent colors, I'm sprinkling in the Kitsch Flamingo and the shaded lilac. I've additionally blasted the page with some water from the spritzer and I'm using the heat tool and a paintbrush to help move it around. Now that our background is done, it's time to add some collaging and I'm going to be starting by tearing up some pieces of botanical collage paper. Now I'm trying to do uneven tears. I'd like this to be very organic and we're going to be collaging this over our paint marbled background. I particularly like this paper pack because there are so many wonderful little botanical elements to add on. In order to put these into the journal, I'm using some collage medium. I am just going in with my fingers and smooshing the collage medium directly onto the page and then adding a layer of collage medium over the top of each of the collage elements. I love how the paint just shows right through the page as I'm collaging. I'm going to take out the Tim Holtz splatter brush and we're going to add some little picket fence speckles across the page to add a bit more visual interest. On the left hand side it's going to give us the illusion of kind of stars in the background and on the, the other side it, I'm hoping it's going to kind of look like little bits of fairy dust sprinkled all over the page. Next, we're going to be using some Distress Mica Spray Stain. Now, we have to give this a really good shake before using because the mica has a tendency to settle at the bottom of the bottle, and to get the full sparkle effect, we really need to give it a good shake. Now, once I have my speckles down, I'll give it a quick dry with the heat tool again. 
Now to make some journal elements. I'm going to be using the moon from the large Tim Holtz moon and stars die, and we're going to be using the stencil THS002 to add some texture to the moon. And we're going to be using the Ranger Tim Holtz palette knife as well as some of the new grit paste. And this is Crypt. This is absolutely amazing stuff. There's these fantastic little speckles in there and it has this really neat stone look, which I'm hoping is going to kind of look like moon dust once we get it through the stencil and onto our die cut piece. Now I'm just going to take the palette knife and smush a bit of the crypt paste onto the moon. Now for this, it's kind of like putting peanut butter on bread. You don't want to put on too much and have a mess all over the stencil, but you don't want to scrape away too much either. Otherwise, you don't get enough coverage on the piece that you're adding a bit of stenciling to. So I'm just going to take the scraper and lightly scrape off the excess and we will have a good impression. All right, let's see how it looks. Mm, even better than I thought. I'm loving those speckles in there and the texture is looking great. Next, we're going to be adding a bit of pumice stone to the moon and it's gonna be our base color and I'm using the Distress Spray Oxide for this. Then I'm going to be adding a dash of brushed pewter to give this moon a little bit of sparkle. But I'm also dabbing off some of the extra Distress Oxide before doing so. Okay, now I'm going to just pick that up and take a look. Ooh, you can still see all the little speckles coming through. So that is looking pretty good. All right, next element, we're going to make some fairies. So the journal theme is revolving around Sleeping Beauty. So I wanted to add her three fairy godmothers. We've got Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. For these, I'm going to be using some of the Distress Glaze. We're going to be using Cracked Pistachio, Broken China, and Fried Brick. We're also going to be adding on some of the Ideology Insect Wings. To put on the Distress Glaze, I'm going to be using the Distress Embossing Pen. And I'm going to take you in just a little bit closer to see what I'm doing. I love the brush tip for adding the embossing ink to the paper dolls. It's so much easier to maneuver and it's easy to work around the little details that I don't want to have other color on it. Now that I have some embossing ink on there, I always do a quick check to make sure that I have all my spots covered and I usually just do a quick tip and light to see if I missed any spots. Now let's add some of our embossing glaze. The first color I'm going to be putting on is Broken China. As we can see, we've got pretty good coverage and there's just a couple of specks where I don't want them. So I will gently brush those off with the Sizzix die pick. I like using that because it helps me get into the small corners where just teeny tiny particles seem to cluster. Now we're going to set that aside for the moment and we'll take a look at our other fairies. And now we're going to add some embossing ink to the other fairies. Again, I'm going to be using the Distress Embossing Ink Pen. Once these are all neatly inked, I'll be pouring on the Distress Embossing Glaze. To remove unwanted specks, I use the Sizzix die pick tool. This is really useful and gets into the small areas on the paper dolls when I might have small grains of embossing powder in places that I don't want. Now that our three fairies have some color, let's add their wings. So to add the wings, I'm just going to be adding a dash of collage medium and we'll stick those wings on the backs of the fairies. I just love how these wings are sized. They are perfect for the tiny Tim Holtz paper dolls.
Next, we're going to be working with the Tim Holtz Sizzik die set candlelight. Here, I'm just going to start by cutting out the pieces and we're going to be running them through the sidekick. I love using the sidekick for small, quick die cuts. It just makes things a lot easier and it's something I can easily fit onto my work table. So we're running all of the die cuts through and I believe I remembered to put the double back sticky adhesive on these sheets. This makes the job a lot easier when assembling pieces if you've added the double sided adhesive. Otherwise you have to glue everything in place, which can be a little bit time consuming and not always as neat. But now let's punch our die cuts out. We'll have to weed them out of the scraps and then we will match them up and assemble them. So for the papers, I have used some of the Tim Holtz white heavy stock, some of the alcohol ink black cardstock, metallic Tim Holtz cardstock, and now we're going to add a little bit of ink to these drippy parts of the candle to add just a bit more depth. Here I'm using some Distress Oxide Mustard Seed. Okay, so these I didn't use the double-sided adhesive. Oh well, next time. So we're just going to assemble these with a bit of collage medium and then wait and let them dry. Next, I'm going to be painting with some Distress Spray Stain Mica, and here I'm painting on some flickering candle to the candle flames. I love how the mica can give a really realistic look to candlelight. Next, I'm also going to be using a bit of jack-o'-lantern as part of the flame for the candle. Now it is time to start assembling all of our pieces onto this journal spread. The main focus of this piece is going to be a large picture of Sleeping Beauty and a verse from the fairy tale. The die cuts are to help tell the story and they're going to be hopefully adding to the centerpiece as supporting pieces. So to put all of these pieces down, I'm of course using Distress Collage Medium to add in all of these little details. I'm particularly loving the way the cluster of candles came out. The different flames flickering in the candlelight makes the piece more magical. On the front of the main focal point, I have added some collage crazing medium. Okay, now that our collage crazing is dried, let's add a little bit of texture to this panel. So what I'm going to do is to lightly scribble a bit of Distress Crayon on here. And if we go down close, we can see that we've got little bits of crazing here and there. So we're going to gently add some Distress Crayon. I'm just going to very lightly scribble that on. And I'm going to smudge that in. Just very lightly, just to bring out some of that crazing. And see, we're getting this awesome vintagey look with just that little touch of Distress Crayon. The great thing about Distress Crayon, it adds just a little bit of color. And if it's not quite enough, we can always go back in and add a little bit more. And if it's too much, we can also go in with a little bit of water to smooth it out. Okay. 
And let's add a touch more over here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. So we're going to move up to the top of the paper and see what we can add up there. Definitely more vintagey now. And again, I'm just taking a bit of water and I'm smudging that crayon into our background. And now we're getting all these wonderful crazy lines all over. Now I'm going to be adding in some die cuts. Here I have die cuts from Garden Greens and Colorize Bloom. I want to take these die cuts and frame the picture. And I'm going to be placing these on here roughly before I make my final decision and glue them down. Now for the colorized blooms, I actually did remember to add the double-sided adhesive. So that's going to be very convenient when I go to stick them on the page. Though the garden greens, I am going to be using some of the Distress Collage Medium. Thank you so much for joining me here today to see the process for creating this journal spread. We hope that you will join us over at the Funky Junkie blog challenge for the theme Dynamite. And don't forget, you can also join in and play along on Instagram using the hashtag Funky Junkie Challenge. I'm looking forward to seeing all of your fantastic creations. And until next time, happy crafting!